Jessica peeps. What is up today? I am super excited because we're going to talk about how to choose keywords for SEO. Now, if you are following my blog, you have noticed that there's a little bit of a series going on in the blog right now called Get on the First Page of Google. So this is installment number two, and it is basically just how to choose your keywords. Now, I, of course, recommend a Google Keyword Planner tool that I will show you in just a second, but the biggest things I want to recommend to you are not exactly techie tools, they're more of just sort of how to go about things. So the first thing I recommend is that you should be thinking like your client or customer. So instead of writing a blog post and really like thinking about it from a standpoint of what you would be searching for, remember that your client or customer is generally a few steps behind you or the person you used to be. So you want to remember what you were searching for then. So for instance, I have a blog post called How to Create HTML the Easy Way. And if I wanted to write that blog post, I wouldn't have used keywords like creating HTML with WordPress text editor because that's not what they're searching for. My people are searching for an easy way to create HTML. So that's exactly what I used as my keywords. Now, the number two thing you need to think about when choosing your keywords is to eliminate what are called stop words. Now, stop words are just a long list of words that are extremely common and used so much that Google sort of ignores them. So if you have a keyword phrase full of stop words, like to, the, it, and, but, before, then Google is sort of going to ignore that. So you wanna make sure you are either eliminating all your stop words or you're using a very minimal amount with unique words that Google can use to index your site. Okay, so the third thing I wanna talk about is not using the same keywords over and over and over again. One group of bloggers I see doing this a lot are photographers. I'm not saying they're the only ones, but I do see them doing this a lot. And what happens is that you're using the same keywords like Washington DC wedding photographer and you're using it on every blog post. Google starts to ignore that because it feels like it's you're spamming their results. So they're going to rank you lower for using the same keywords in multiple posts. So you wanna find a way to use those keywords at, on your site as a whole but not on every single post that you publish. So. There's the three I wanna recommend that are not exactly tech tools. Number one, think like your client or customer and think about how they would search for what you're publishing. Number two, eliminate stop words and use as minimal amount as you possibly can. And then number three, don't use the same keywords over and over in blog posts. Now, I do wanna talk about the Google Keywords Planner because it's an awesome tool. And so let's do a quick run through with that and let me show you what it looks like and how to use it to your advantage. You basically just go to adwords.google.com forward slash KO forward slash keyword planner. I will link that below. But this, and this is definitely not a comprehensive view of what all you can do with this, but this is just sort of how this works. So you can go in here, you'll have to sign into your Google account, and then you'll go in here and you'll enter your product or service, which is basically what your blog post is about. So I just put in easy HTML just to stick with the example I used earlier. So I'm going to skip these other two categories here, and I'm going to click Google here just to make sure it is searching on Google. And then I just wanna hit get ideas. Now, you'll see here that the keyword ideas, easy HTML, averages around 100 to 1,000 monthly searches and the competition is very low for this, which means it's a good one for me. Um, HTML in general, 100K to 1 million searches per month and the competition is also low. So you can see there what is getting the most views or the most searches and how much competition there is. So if there's a lot of competition, then you might want to go with different keywords or if there's not enough views or 
um, too many monthly searches, then you might want to go with different keywords as well. So let's go back and use a different example. So let's do convert kit e-course. And it's loading. All right. So it's showing me here that it can't tell me how many monthly searches there are per uh, or per month because that's not a searched enough term and the competition is non-existent as well. But if you'll go to online courses, all of that, you can see this. Now, so let's go back and do just convert kit course. All right, so 10 to 100 searches and the competition is low. So Honestly, 10 to 100 is not a lot of monthly searches for something like that, but because it is so specific for me, it's probably something I want to hit on, especially since the competition is low. All right, so let's see. Um, DIY your website. Whoops. And I hit enter and it's loading. So now you can see that there's not a lot, of, a lot of monthly searches, so it can't predict the other things. Um, right here is do-it-yourself website, and there's a lot of searches, and the competition is high. So that's not something I want to do, right? Um, I don't want to stick in those categories. So maybe I want to say learn WordPress. Okay, so there's a good one. It's got a lot of searches monthly and the competition is low. So that might be something I want to use for my DIY your website e-course key terms or keywords. So this is basically how it works. You just want to sort of go through here and see what might work really well for what you're thinking about. So once you've went through the other steps, you want to go into the keyword planner and see what's going to work for you. All right, guys, so that is all for installment number two of how to get on the first page of Google. So join me again in the next coming weeks for parts three and parts four. And if you have any questions that you want me to answer about SEO, make sure to hit me up on Instagram, on Twitter, in my Facebook group, BizTech Collective, any of those places, I'll be happy to answer them or add them to the series. Along with this post, I have created an SEO blog post strategy checklist. So when you are publishing your blog post, you can easily use this checklist to check off the things you need to do to increase SEO on that post. So if you wanna grab that, head over to the blog. Bye y'all.